show your support. Like, share and subscribe. Hello, I am that British guy and welcome to my review for the free PlayStation Plus games on the PlayStation 4 for the month of January. Now a little disclaimer before we start, I haven't been particularly well the beginning of the year and because of that I haven't been able to play the VR game for this month, Starblood Arena, um, mainly because I've been quite bad for uh, a fair few days now that I didn't have time to and also because of how the VR system sometimes makes me feel a bit queasy anyway I just didn't want to push my luck basically so what I'm going to do because that game is free for two months um, as is a tradition with the VR games I am going to be covering that in February instead so apologies for anyone who particularly wanted to hear any thoughts on that game. I haven't been able to play it yet, but I will be covering it in February's PlayStation 4 video instead. So because of that, the two games that I will be looking at though are Deus Ex Mankind Divided and Batman The Telltale Series Season 1. So let's begin with Deus Ex Mankind Divided. Now, Deus Ex Mankind Divided is a sequel to Human Revolution and basically the events of that game with the augmented humans going a bit crazy and going on a rampage um, they're still very much part of the main story of this game it takes place two years after and for anyone that hasn't played that game there is a brilliant 12 minute sort of recap um, of the main plot points of the previous game just to really help you get to grips with who's who and what's what in the universe so you don't have to have played the previous game but it's definitely worth at least having a look at that 12 minute video so that you can really get to grips with what's going on um, and really the tensions from that situation are still um, prevalent throughout the world hence mankind divided that's kind of what's divided them um, and you play at the very beginning um, again as Adam Jensen um, you play through a kind of a tutorial level which just gets you used to the controls and just the environment and um, there are a couple of basic tutorials in terms of shooting and item selection and using cover and things like that in the first level in Dubai and after that you're then taken back to Prague and the game really opens out but at the very beginning of that part of the storyline you are kind of caught in the crossfire in a big explosion and this causes um, Adam's body to kind of malfunction um, his augmentations aren't functioning properly so you have to first thing that you need to do is to get in contact with someone and, and work out what's going on with that and what this basically does is it essentially resets all of his extra abilities back down to zero so that you have to build them back up throughout the game again and then after that you just kind of play through main missions and side missions depending on if you um, speak to any other um, NPCs throughout it, it, your sandboxes certainly at the beginning anyway kind of split into sections on different metro lines um, and you're able to kind of openly explore ways of getting to different objectives and dealing with different objectives in a sort of semi open world situation but you're kind of locked off in certain sections so it's not this big um, open world sandbox that you would get from something like Skyrim or The Witcher but it's not just you must follow this path speak to this person um, deal with that and then move on to the next thing there is kind of it, it's sort of semi open world it's quite nice actually because it it's able to keep um, some kind of restraint on the story without it kind of branching out far too wide which is sometimes the problem with massive open world games but it does give you that element of freedom as well which is quite nice um in terms of the sort of general gameplay 
my only well two major gripes really considering this is supposed to be a triple a game and when it did release about 18 months ago there were quite a few issues with it specifically on the pc with uh crashing and it just not running properly even on sort of high-end pcs the when you do sort of silent takedowns the screen will play almost like a mini cutscene rather than it be kind of fluid in sort of something say akin to well Metal Gear Solid 5 is a very good example for anyone that downloaded that game a few months back um, on one of the, the free games I think it was October September time something like that um, any animations like that were kind of fluid you you it moved you straight into that animation it dealt the attack and then it kind of threw you straight back into controlling the character and it was done all in one quick motion but with this it kind of very very briefly it's only a split second it kind of the screen goes black the camera angle changes and you take someone down and then for another split second it goes black and gives you back control as you were and it just takes you out of the immersion ever so slightly and i realize it's a really small sort of pernickety thing to mention but this is supposed to be a triple a game that when it came out would have been i don't suppose 40 50 pounds something like that um and it's just a bit it it kind of draws you out of the experience ever so slightly the other thing as well when you're going from section to section there's quite a lot of long loading times which you wouldn't expect considering with things like Skyrim everything is there pretty much apart from some more dungeons and things but it's going from one side of the map to the other is already all there and going into a village is everything's already there for you you haven't got to wait these loading times out so again that kind of takes you out of it they try and kind of mask it with showing um adam on the subway kind of looking around his environment but you can't get free control over the camera you can't actually do anything it's not like you can even look through his inventory or anything like that to kind of kill the time you just have to watch him standing in a subway train and it's just again for the kind of game that it is it's not something i would have expected when if you compare it to similar sorts of games with a similar sort of feel to them and similar idea of vastness you don't tend to get that as much and it's just off-putting to be honest more than anything else and kind of devalues what i would class AAA games to be which is a shame um the only other major issue is some of the controls feel a little bit counterintuitive if you have played various other kind of first person shooters and they're not my sort of go-to game but usually with things like that in terms of movement and crouching around things and opening menus holstering and and getting out weapons and things like that usually the controls are fairly generic some of them are but then others really aren't and that's what puts you off because it then feels like even the ones that are the same as all the other games you kind of expect them not to be because the other like menu selections things like that aren't what you would think that they should be um and sort of some are and some aren't and it, it's, it takes a bit of time getting used to there are other um sort of loadouts for your um button prompts depending on how you like to play but i'd set mine as default under the assumption that they would have set things out for you in the most sensible logical way and i don't think they have so it would definitely be worth playing around with those other menus just to see if you can find a way that's a more accustomed to how you would like to play basically but other than that i'm feel like i'm very invested in the game itself and the environments look really really nice it's nice that it's not too vastly open world that you could just kind of lose yourself in in the horizon and essentially not really focus in too much on the main storyline i do have that kind of issue with big open world games where they're kind of trying to put on this um, idea of importance on you following the main 
storyline, but then they'll let you wander off for 20 hours doing something else while supposedly this really important thing needs doing because somebody's been taken hostage or this particular boss is terrorising a certain area and you're allowed to just wander off for 20 hours and do what you like. It kind of takes you out of the, the immersion of that as well, which is a bit of a problem and this kind of feels like it's found a bit of a middle ground because it's it's reined you in enough but lets you kind of explore areas as much as you like but you can obviously kind of run out of things to do in that particular area fairly quickly so you've then got to get back onto the main storyline before then opening the game up to a different area and doing the same sorts of things so it kind of restricts to a certain extent just enough and then opens out a bit and then kind of draws you back in, which is quite nice, to be honest. I wish more games would do that, rather than just give you A or B. This seems to have found the middle ground, which is quite nice. Next up, we have the Batman Telltale game, and this is Series 1. Um, I believe there is a Series 2 um, coming out later this year, which is, I suppose, why they've um, offered this one up for free. They've tried to tailor this between controlling both Batman and Bruce Wayne in equal measure so that you kind of see him as a whole because obviously those two sides of his life are equally as important and kind of act as two different sides of the same coin. Um, and often what he does as Batman will then have consequence as who he is as Bruce Wayne and vice versa. And again, it's your sort of same old telltale type game where you'll get sort of certain conversation branches um, and what you say and what you do at different times will impact on how certain characters will react to you at other times. Usually with those sorts of things though, it's because if you act in a favourable way, they might open up other possible conversation trees later down the line. It doesn't tend to change the overall narrative of the main thread of the game um, it doesn't change basically what the the end game is so I, I always find those kind of things all oh, your choices will um, impact on the story usually it's just if you say something slightly negative to someone they'll remember that so that in three scenes time they're not may be very cooperative with you so you might not learn the whole truth about something or they might say something mean to you instead of saying something nice to you but basically if for argument's sake with this someone was supposed to be captured then they're still going to get captured just because you said something to somebody else earlier doesn't mean that that person doesn't get captured um, because that would change the whole dynamic of the entire game and that they're not open to that kind of thing it's it's not possible to put that many different um, variables in in order to get that different a storyline it, it just doesn't happen so and that's always my problem with these kind of telltale games I had the problem the last one they had was the um, the Game of Thrones one and it's pointless really um, this one I found a lot better though because I'm actually bothered about the character of Batman um, I've grown up with that character I know that character already so they don't have to go into the explaining who is who um, but it's a different new story that's been written specifically for this which is quite nice they're telling that Batman Bruce Wayne dynamic character getting you involved in it right from the off both on sort of the action side and the conversation and sort of intellectual gathering side as well um, right from the off um, and kind of throwing you into the shoes of being both Bruce Wayne and um, Batman which is quite a nice change um, but in terms of anything else it's basically like any other Telltale game um, I've only really been playing through the first episode this is five as per normal um, whether season two will directly link into season one I don't know I haven't really looked into it or whether it's a completely separate story set maybe six months after with a whole different host of villains um, I, I'm not sure um, but it was okay for what it is it's never something I would go out of my way to hunt down though I don't think but it was nice to have the dynamic between 
Batman and Bruce Wayne between the action side of things and the kind of more socialising side um, of, of Bruce Wayne and how that impacts in the world of God. Right, now we move on to buy, try or fly. And here are both of the games in question. So we have Deus Ex Mankind Divided. And you can see that one is priced up at the moment on PlayStation Store for $49.99. And the Batman Telltale Series 1 is priced up at $24.99. Now first up, Deus Ex. It's definitely not worth $49.99. There's no way I would go out of my way to pay that for this game. There have been since release a few DLC packs. Some are purely sort of item cosmetic based and some are to do with extra bits of story and extra levels. These are not included within your download. You will have to pay extra for these bits and pieces. So that to start off with definitely wouldn't pay $49.99 for them. Um, I am enjoying my involvement with the game though. There are a kind of a couple of um, immersion breaking things but by and large they don't break the game completely. Um, so I would definitely say try this game. Pick it up now while it's free. You've got a few weeks before the game should change over. And next we have the Batman so this $24.99, as I've already said, I would never go out of my way to get any Telltale game, really. They all essentially are the same sort of thing. You get a bit of conversational trees that you have to decide how to respond to certain questions and certain statements. Little active time events as well, which are okay in this kind of game. I don't like them too much in triple a sort of games but i suppose they serve a purpose in something like this because there's not that much gameplay other than active time events 24.99 is definitely again not worth paying that for it if it's on sale maybe half that and you're particularly keen on that sort of game or you're particularly keen on batman then maybe but again it's worth a try to see what you make of it um but if you already sort of have played many Telltale games and you know you don't like them then there's no reason why you're going to like this one or if you're not particularly invested in Batman as a character then there's not really going to be a lot here for you either so in those cases it might be worth flying but the game itself is solid enough for what you do and, and as long as you have either an interest in Batman or specifically this type of game it's definitely worth trying before the games change over in February. So there we go, they were my thoughts on the PlayStation Plus free games for the PlayStation 4 in the month of January. Apologies again for anybody that was looking forward to a review of Star Blood Arena. That will be in the video for the PlayStation 4 games for February, I promise. As always, there will be separate videos later in the month for the PlayStation 3 games and for the Vita games as well. But until then, I have been that British guy and I will see you very soon. Thank you.